Welcome to the Blade of Tech Channel 63rd edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day of the week of August 23rd through August 29th in space exploration, science, and technology. August 23rd, 1977. The first human-powered flight of over a mile occurred on this date. Brian Allen accomplished the feat by pedaling the purpose-built aircraft Gossamer Condor and a figure-eight course in Shafter, California. By doing so, Allen won the 50,000-pound Kramer Prize, which had been waiting for a winner since its announcement in 1959. The Kramer Prize could only be won by an aircraft using human power. A series of attempts were made in the 1960s and the 1970s to design an aircraft that would win the prize, but although several were able to fly, none were able to effectively steer, which was a requirement to navigate a figure eight course. It wasn't until the late 70s that lightweight plastics combined with a power and steering arrangement constructed in reverse of a typical powered airframe provided the solution to the vexing problem of a steerable aircraft with a sufficient power to weight ratio. An improved airframe called the Gossamer Albatross was designed and built by the designer of the Condor, Paul McCready. That craft, again piloted by Allen, successfully crossed the English Channel on June 12th of 1979, a distance of 22 and a half miles. August 24th, 79. The long dormant Mount Vesuvius erupted in Italy, burying the Roman cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Aplantis, and Stabiae in volcanic ash on this date. An estimated 20,000 people died. When discovered, the sites became astonishing archaeological time capsules. Official excavations began on April 6, 1748, on behalf of the Italian king's interest in collecting antiquities. Largely preserved under the ash, the excavated cities offered a unique snapshot of Roman life, frozen at the moment it was buried, an extraordinarily detailed insight into the everyday life of its inhabitants, although much of the evidence was lost in the early excavations. Vesuvius has erupted many times since and is the only volcano on the European mainland to have erupted within the last 100 years. Today, it is regarded as one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world because of the population of 3 million people living near enough to be affected by an eruption, with 600,000 in the danger zone, making it the most densely populated volcanic region in the world, as well as its tendency towards violently explosive eruptions. August 25, 1981. The U.S. spacecraft Voyager 2 came within 63,000 miles of Saturn's cloud cover on this date, sending back data and pictures of the ring planet in its closest approach to Saturn, showing not a few, but thousands of rings. Photographs were also sent back of a number of Saturn's moons. The space probe was launched on August 20, 1977, and visited Jupiter on July 9, 1979, and continued on to Uranus, reaching it on January 24, 1986, and Neptune, reaching it on August 25th, 1989, exactly eight years later, before leaving the solar system. Having a nuclear power source, the space probe continues to study ultraviolet sources among the stars, and its fields and particle instruments continue to search for the boundary between the sun's influence and interstellar space. August 26, 1843, the first U.S. design of a typewriter that was successfully prototyped was granted a patent in the U.S. on this date. Charles Thurber, a Massachusetts firearms manufacturer, built a working 15-key machine that was the first to feature a roller that held the paper and moved horizontally as keys were struck. Thurber's typewriter was to remain a curiosity, however, as he himself did not manufacture it and the patent did not draw any interest. The first American inventor to successfully commercialize a typewriter was Christopher Scholes. He was granted a patent by the U.S. in 1868, but his machine required the user to manually move the paper after each keystroke, and like Thurber before him, drew little interest. 
It was a combination of the key ideas by the two men, Thurber's movable cylindrical platen and Scholz's piano-style keyboard that ended up being successful. Another firearms manufacturer, Remington, produced the Scholz typewriter, redesigning it after several years into a product still recognizable in computer keyboards today. We discussed Scholz and Remington in episode 17. August 27, 1962, the Mariner 2 Venus Orbiter was launched on an Atlas Agena B rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 12 on this date. The probe was the first spacecraft to successfully fly by another planet. Mariner 2 was a backup for the Mariner 1 mission, which failed shortly after launch to Venus. The probe passed below the planet at its closest distance of 35,000 kilometers on December 14, 1962. Transmissions continued until January 3, 1963, when the probe finally ceased operating. Mariner 2 remains in a heliocentric orbit around Venus to this day. Scientific discoveries made by Mariner 2 included the verification of Venus's rate of rotation, the extreme heat on its surface, and extreme surface pressure. NASA passed this information onto Soviet designers but they failed to adequately harden their Venus landers subsequent to the Mariner 2 mission. The first Soviet lander to successfully deorbit into Venus was the Venera 3 in 1965, which was immediately destroyed upon dropping through the atmosphere. It wasn't until 1970, after several attempts, that the Soviets succeeded in part with Venera 7. We previously covered Venus exploration in episode 39, Milestones 20, Milestones 115 and Milestones 119. August 28th, 1991. The first email sent from space occurred on this date. Using a Mac portable aboard the space shuttle Atlantis, astronauts James Adamson and Shannon Lucid wrote, Hello Earth, greetings from the STS-43 crew. This is the first Apple link from space. Having a great time, wish you were here. Send Cryo and RCS. Hasta la vista, baby. We'll be back. The message was transmitted to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The primary mission of SDS-43 was the deployment of the Tracking and Data Relay Satellite 5, the very piece of equipment that made the email possible. The TDRS satellite constellation provides direct communication links between Earth and low-orbiting spacecraft, such as the Space Shuttle. Previously, orbiting spacecraft could communicate with Earth only when in sight of a ground tracking station, about 15% of each orbit. The TDRS network allows communication from 85 to 100% of an orbit, depending on the spacecraft's altitude. As of 2021, there are nine active satellites in the TDRS constellation. August 29, 1949, the USSR tested their first atomic device, first lightning, on this date. It was an implosive type plutonium bomb detonated at the Semipalatinsk test range, giving up to a 20 kiloton yield. In the US, it was called the Joe No. 1. This event came five years earlier than anyone in the West had predicted, largely due to the predictable treason, in retrospect, of one man. Physicist Klaus Fuchs. Fuchs was a German communist who had fled the Nazi regime and was taken in by a British scientist due to his genius in his field. Fuchs eventually became part of the Manhattan Project, where he passed detailed blueprints of the original American bomb designs to the Russians. When his malfeasance was revealed officially, he was imprisoned for nine years. Thereafter, he emigrated to communist East Germany and spent the rest of his life as a scientist for the Warsaw Pact. On September 23, 1949, President Truman announced the Soviet detonation to the American public, setting off a 42-year Cold War that only ended with the Soviet Union's collapse in 1991. Before we get to the current event of the week, we want to see if you enjoyed the 63rd episode of Belated Text, The Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices or are there other events that were better? 
go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. On January 22nd, 2021, Google's Loon project announced that it was scrapping plans to set up a company to build giant balloons to beam the internet to rural areas. Loon was a long-term experimental bet from the tech giant's X business unit. The balloons were the size of tennis courts and self-navigating. Loon chief executive Alastair Westgarth wrote, quote, Developing radical new technology is inherently risky, but that doesn't make breaking this news any easier. Today I'm sad to share that Loon will be winding down. While we've found a number of willing partners along the way, we haven't found a way to get the cost low enough to build a long-term, sustainable business. It is likely that SpaceX and OneWeb's business models led to Loon's demise. SpaceX had successfully launched several hundred broadband satellites into orbit and has begun beta service in several countries. OneWeb is far behind on satellite launches, but clearly has the capital to follow through on its plans for a competing constellation. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered in the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.